One of the new features in 3ds Max 2016 extension 1 is the text plus primitive. If you go ahead and install extension 1, you'll find the text plus object now listed under standard primitives. This differs from the traditional text object which was found as a spline option previously. Let's go ahead and create a text plus object and what I want to do is take specific look at the set value as text option. This allows you to take any sort of computation or setting or some information from within your scene and use that value as the text input for the text plus object. Let's take a look at a simple example to start with so we'll go ahead and create for ourselves another object in the scene to use perhaps a sphere. And what we want to do is perhaps take the radius of the sphere and use it that information as the text input for our text plus object. Let's go ahead and animate the radius of our sphere so we'll turn on auto key go down to the end of our timeline and we'll go over here and just take the radius of the sphere down. We now have uh, something in our scene that we can use to get some information animated information and see how this text plus object will uh, work with that. You might also note over here in the modify tab of the command panel that I have my display unit set to inches and it's very important to note if we're going to go ahead and set up some math for Max to compute for us which we will be doing that under unit setup the system unit is also set to inches just something we want to make a mental note of obviously your system unit can be set to whatever you want so now that we have something happening in our scene let's go ahead and use the information from that as the data input for our text object to do that, with text plus selected in the modify tab of the command panel, let's open the set value as text dialog. By default, it gives you a value with a default name, and you can go ahead and call this whatever you want. In this case, maybe we'll call it uh, sphere radius. And to enable one of the options to customize this, let's go ahead and just choose expression. And now the button that says pick value from scene becomes enabled. If you go ahead and click on this, this works a lot like wire parameters. You go pick an object in your scene and then go choose something that you want to use as the data input for your text plus object. In this case, we'll just take the radius. That's the first one there. And now we just need to insert this new information into our text. When we do that, you'll see that it adds this after whatever text is already there. In this case, I'm not interested in the default text that's displayed. So over here in the little text editor, we'll go ahead and just get rid of that. And now you can see that the radius of my sphere is being displayed as the data input for text plus. And in fact, if I scrub the timeline, you'll see that information change. It's currently being displayed as a whole number, so no decimal uh, detail. And it's using four placeholders for the information. Obviously, I only need two. And in fact, if I want to see some sort of decimal detail after that, I can go ahead and say real number, and now the number of decimal places becomes enabled, and I have it set to 2, which is fine. As I mentioned earlier, the computation is using inches, so whenever we're dealing with uh, size or distance inside of Max, and we're running a computation on it, it's using the default system unit, in this case inches. So we could, in essence, also go to display the information as display units and our display units were set to inches so the information really hasn't changed though it is using the default number of decimal places that I have configured in max. In my max I have four decimal places set up as my uh, spinner precision. So again we can scrub the timeline and see that what's happening is the expression which in this case is simply the radius of the sphere is being evaluated every frame and that information is being used as the value that's being displayed for our text plus object. Now let's go ahead and do something a little more interesting. Let's use the ability to write a custom expression to display some more interesting information and perhaps some more useful information in our scene. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, delete the sphere. I'm not interested in it anymore. And let's go ahead and create two objects in the scene maybe just two uh, point helpers. And I'll go ahead and animate one of these point helpers to be moving. So again, I'll go down to the end of my timeline, turn on auto key, and I'll go ahead and move one of these guys across the screen. Now what I'd like to do is have the text plus object display the distance between the two objects. So I can go back to the set value as text dialog 
And in this case, I'm going to write a custom expression. We can go ahead and add a new value. We could rewrite the old one, but I'll just create a new one. And again, I'll make this a custom expression and I'll call it uh, distance p1, p2. You can call this whatever you want. Let's go ahead now and edit this information. This brings up the expression controller, which you may recognize from the motion tab of the command panel as one of the controllers you can put on any object in Max. One of the easiest ways to get this information, the distance between two objects, is to use some simple vector math. If you're unfamiliar with vectors, you can consult uh, the Max script help file if you want. There are several sections on working with vectors, including some simple samples. And in this case, we're just going to use a basic function related to vectors. We'll need to get the vector information from each of our point objects in order to compute the distance between them. So to do that, let's go ahead and create a new variable. We'll call it v1. By the way, when using the expression controller, they are the variable names are case sensitive, so that's kind of important to note. And we'll use v1. We'll create that. And then we'll set that vector equal to the position of our first point helper. So we highlight it and go assign to controller. And in the list, we'll go ahead and select point 0.01, its transform, and its position track. A vector is essentially a location in space, and with that information comes the direction to that point in space and the length. We'll go ahead and do the same thing for the second point helper. So we'll go ahead and create another variable. We'll call it v2 in this case. We'll go create. And again, we'll go ahead and assign that to a controller, but in this case, we'll assign it to 0.002's position track. In essence, each of these vectors, if you were to take a look at the information it's outputting, is simply the position in XYZ coordinates. If we take a look over here at the function list, which is a nice little helper to have, it'll bring up a list of stock functions that we can use within the expression controller to generate a value. One of those listed down here is length, and this is the length of a vector. As I mentioned, a vector has really three components, a location in space, a direction, and a length. One of the simple math functions you can perform with vectors is to subtract the two to generate a third vector. The length of that third vector will be the distance between the two points. So let's go ahead and write out that expression. Based on the function list, we want to get the length, and we want to get the length of the vector between these other two vectors. So what we'll do is go ahead and subtract v1 and v2. Subtraction of the two vectors will generate a third vector and that third vector's length will be the distance between the two. If we go ahead and evaluate this expression and hit close, now what we want to do again is insert in text. In this case I'm not interested in the radius of the sphere anymore so over here in my little text field I'll go ahead and get rid of that information and now go insert in text this information. It's being displayed as a whole number, but I might want to display it as a distance in my dis current display units, which is inches. And if we go ahead and scrub the timeline, you'll see that, in fact, the information is updating with the distance between these two points. What's interesting to note is that I can go ahead and take the first point and actually move it, and the information will update. If we go back and select our text object and then take a look at some of the other options, you remember what we've been doing is inserting this value into the existing text. So I could go ahead and add some text to this that becomes part of what we're seeing on screen. So maybe I could put in the word distance from point, let's do this, let's use the actual name, point zero zero one two point zero zero two equals and now I have a complete expression with a description along with it and as I scrub the timeline the information is updating with the distance between the two objects but everything else is treated purely as raw text. Obviously you can combine this to create a lot of detailed information in your screen that's being displayed of which a computation or some piece of uh, information or data is only a part. Next, what I'd like to do is something a little more interesting using the options in the expression controller. 
first let's go ahead and just get rid of some of this uh, extra text that I put in here and what I like to do is have the value that's being displayed equal to the distance that this animated point 0.02 is traveling each frame so rather than get the distance between two separate objects I want to get the distance that a single object is traveling each frame this can be very useful for computing uh, the speed of an object and some other things you might want to display so let's go back to our set value as text field and we'll just work with the the same value well let's go ahead and create a new one so we'll go ahead and hit add and we'll call this uh, distance per frame again this will be an expression so we'll go ahead and hit edit to create a brand new expression and we're going to do something very similar to what we did before. We're going to create several vector variables. We'll create one called uh, v1 and v1 will equal the position of point 002. We're going to go ahead and create another vector. We'll call this one v2 and I'm going to assign v2 also to point 002's position track. And we're going to use an interesting feature of the expression controller, which allows us to offset the information of the same object. So both of these vectors currently are exactly the same. But what I want to do is take the first one and offset it by 160 ticks. There are 160 ticks in each frame. This is what Max uses behind the scene to do some subframe sampling and some computations. So by offsetting vector 1 by negative 160 ticks, I'm in essence getting the position information of this object one frame earlier than the frame that I'm on, which is what's being evaluated for vector two. As you can imagine, getting that distance is the same as the previous expression. So we'll use the length function. We'll type in length. And in this case, we will subtract V2 and V1. We'll hit evaluate close and insert in text and again in this case I'm not interested in the previous function which was the distance between the two objects so I'll get rid of that little bit of text and what I should be seeing now is the distance that 0 0.002 is traveling each frame currently it's zero but if I go forward I'll see this information update what I might want to do, of course, is use that display option to display it as something a little more intuitive, perhaps with my display units, which would be inches. And now I can see this update with the distance it's traveling each frame. You'll notice that it increases in distance each frame until about halfway through my animation and then decreases. Of course, this is because we have auto tangent as our default function curve interpolation. So we're speeding up as we get to the maximum point between the two and then slowing down again as we reach our endpoint. So using the ability to write a custom expression controller and insert that as the value that's being displayed by the text plus object has many 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 uses and understanding how to write some simple expressions can be very powerful when combined with the text plus object.